climate justice is really about the people on the planet. Because many times when we talk about climate action, sometimes it really eliminates or removes the people face in the conversation. And this makes me realize that not all climate action is actually climate justice. So climate justice is more than installing solar panels. It's actually about the people, having the people, you know, in the conversation. When these solar panels are installed, who is benefiting from them? Who could be harmed by this installation? Are they affordable for people? So it's really the place of understanding that we are talking about this solution, but who is benefiting from this solution and who is getting harmed because of this solution? I'd like to hear from you, Mary. <laughs> well. I would say, you know, that my approach is also people-centered, but I have a kind of different way of thinking about it because I, I feel I came to understanding the impact of climate through the lens of human rights. Because I was working in African countries after my five years as UN High Commissioner for Human Rights um, on rights that matter if you don't have them, rights to food and water, health, education, an attempt to show how you uh, could actively do uh, economic and social rights and the tradition of NGOs was always to look at civil and political rights and accuse governments of not fulfilling those rights and I wanted to have a more holistic approach and uh, I was shocked when I saw uh, the impact on people and then I realized I've missed something really fundamental here uh, the climate crisis is affecting the poorest countries, poorest communities, small island states and indigenous peoples far more severely and far earlier. And they're not responsible for the emissions. And also, quite frankly, they tend to be the black and brown and indigenous peoples in our world. So there's also a racial uh, part of it. Secondly, I could see the impact on women. You know, having different social roles very often, sometimes not even having um, rights like land rights or access to credit, um, having to put food on the table, having to go further in drought for firewood or water, and still trying to make their communities resilient. They're not just victims, they're also actors for change. The third way that I learned about the injustice was through the work of young climate activists um, saying, you know, we're school children, we can't change things, but you can and you're not doing it you know, the injustice of that, loading yeah. a bad future. And there's an injustice that I think we don't think about enough, which is very relevant to African countries, in fact. Um, industrialized countries like my country, Ireland, Europe, the United States, Korea, Japan, we built our economies on fossil fuel. Now our responsibility is to wean ourselves off much more quickly, but with just transition for the workers in oil, coal, gas, and in my country, peat, turf, um, because they built the economy, so they deserve to be part of the future and to be included in discussion and in the jobs of the future. But developing countries, and I saw this before Paris, want to go clean energy as fast as possible because that's good for them, they know that. Um, and yet they haven't got the investment, they haven't got the transfer of technology, the skills, even the intellectual property that may be necessary. We haven't engaged properly in that. And so that's also you know, a lack of a development justice, if I can put it that way. And then fifthly, our injustice to nature, you know, the extinction of species, the loss of biodiversity, just the harm we're doing, which is not actually to nature, it's to us as well, because we are nature. And that I've learned from indigenous people.